It's good to be here. Uh, I'm excited about uh, tonight. A couple things I wanted to do before um, um, get into uh, the message. Um, I, um, if we have a couple of books. Well, I'll do this first. Um, I, would, I wanted our staff to come in here, and, I, and that's really acknowledge them. They really worked hard during this conference. So some of them are in the back. They're coming, um, and I just wanted us to give them a hand. Um, it's one thing for <laughs> my staff. I love them. There you go. Y'all come on. Y'all can walk in here. That's all right. Yeah, I, I love my staff. I, I mean, they work hard. They're behind the scenes. And they're working hard, and I, I love, we're family around here, so they're serving and, and giving, but I mean, I, I want to acknowledge them because I love them so much, and they, they do a great job. Uh, and so I hope you felt at home, and I uh, hope you, uh, you guys are all full of barbecue. Uh, it's good to be full of barbecue instead of something else. Um, be full of Jesus, but be full. Uh, but at the same time, I, I love them, and um, I just wanted us to... I want to sit there. <laughs> there they are. They already gave you a clap. But anyway, yeah, there they are. Right there. So. <laughs> Thank you, Liberty. All you guys. Thank you all so much. And also, I wanted you to make available to you. I know we said some things. Uh, there are books and tapes. Uh, tapes. I said, did I say tapes? <laughs> did I say that? I said something today about a cassette tape. My daughter was like, what is that? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> cassette tape. Um, but anyway, I, um, there's some books that we want to make available. I, said, I mentioned this one last night. This is Alan's book, uh, Seeing as Jesus Sees. It's a great book, uh, a material for you to get out there. I'll be showcasing it tonight. Tomorrow, you'll, you'll have a chance to, to get, uh, get a hold of it. Also, Dudley's book, uh, Orphans No More. How many of you have read this book? Get it for somebody else. I'm asking you to get it for somebody else because it is a great book that will, will chase off any orphanity that you have uh, left. Anybody, anybody was blessed by that? My favorite, it is a good book, but my favorite uh, is the Grace Works book. How many of you have been blessed by this book? Uh, yeah, so that if you haven't uh, had a chance to read it, or here's a great time for you to get a book for somebody else. Now, here's something I tell our people here at the church, is that reading has become a lost art uh, today. Would you agree? Everybody wants somebody to read to them, and I do that too sometimes. If I'm if I'm doing something, I have uh, I, I get an audio book or whatever. But Dudley, as he talks about scolding, one day he told me he said, "Chris, he goes, there's nothing that can compare to reading because your brain needs to read." And so I do read. I do read some, um, but at the same time, we need to get back to reading. Amen. And so uh, Grace Works is my favorite book because it just really talks about you can't lose what you didn't earn. And so the truth is, is that grace still works. Not only does it still work, but it's still amazing yeah. and hadn't changed. Amen. Yeah. Um, also, my book is out there called uh, Shot in the Dark. I wrote that last year, came out last year. Uh, it's a story about my uh, testimony of uh, a hunting accident that I was in, uh, and I'm still here. And um, anyway, it's a great book. It's a great read. Uh, and so those books are uh, available uh, for you to purchase out there. Now, <clears throat> something that I do before I, uh, before I get ready to preach is I ask our people, let me see your Bibles. Anybody bring, you bring your words, you bring a Bible. Can I see them? Or electronic devices? Can, let me see them. Raise them high. Okay, good. I ask my people that every Sunday because I want them to bring their Bibles because we're going to get in, into the Word. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for... Your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word is so good, so amazing, Lord. Uh, and we ask you, Lord, tonight uh, to just speak to us. We say speak because your servants, your children are listening. I'm thankful, Lord, that not only can we get into the word, but we're asking, Lord, for your word to get into us. It's it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So thank you, Lord, that, um, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we thank you for that. And we love and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever heard of a story or, or uh, some a story that somebody told you or gave you that was so crazy, so far-fetched, so like outlandish, that when it was done, they would somebody would say, "Have you ever you ever heard anything like that?" 
um, or, or there was something that you, you, somebody said something to you, and they said, and they said is that, is, have you ever seen anything like that? And then they go, because this is the South, seen it? I ain't even heard of anything like that. Remember that? Um, my, my, uh, my daughters, for the first time, my oldest daughter, uh, I got to watch the movie Tombstone with her. And there was a part in the, in the movie where um, there was a shootout uh, where Kirk, <laughs> he walked, he, he, I mean, just got through and, at the creek and, was, and, and just pulled up and started shooting everybody. And so at the end of that, they go, have you ever seen anything like that? And he goes, I, I seen it. I ain't never heard of anything like that. Anybody ever had a story that was so outlandish? Like, I've never heard of anything like that in my whole life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You don't have to go far. You can go to Walmart and see something that you've never seen before. That you, you go, you go, not go far. You ain't got to go far. And that happened one time when I was, uh, we were, uh, I've been growing up in church my whole life. My parents are pastors at Arkansas in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, still, still pastoring. Uh, I'm, uh, I was raised in Arkansas. I was, I was born in Houston, but we moved to Arkansas after my parents uh, were going to uh, uh, John Osteen's church, Lakewood Church. It was John Osteen back then. Uh, and, um, we, and they had gotten saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they wanted to go back to Arkansas to tell everybody what had happened to them because they came out of the Baptist church, and they got filled with the Holy Spirit. We got to go back and tell. And so we, we went and, um, uh, back to Arkansas. It was Beverly Hill, Billy's in reverse, back, actually. And so we, we went back to Arkansas. Dad would preach, and we were at an Assembly of God church where we were doing, we were doing a passion plays for Easter. Easter's coming up. Um, and so we would do, we would try to win people and, and have people, we invited people at all throughout the city of Camden, Arkansas to come to this, to this play and that we all acted, all the members acted in this play of Jesus being raised from the dead. And one time we wanted to, uh, put, uh, just aesthetics on Jesus being raised from the dead. And one old boy whose name was Brett said, I got an idea. Instead of Jesus just falling back into the cloud of smoke, why don't we get a crank and raise him up out of, so he can really ascend out of the, the, uh, the ground and say, why stand you here gazing? And so they say, so let's get a crank. And, and, and then, so anytime somebody says, I got an idea in Arkansas, it's not a good idea. I'm just going to tell you, it's not a good idea. You guys know what it's the equivalent of hold my beer. It is equivalent of that. And so they all agreed that this would be a great thing to do. And so what happened was, is that we, they tried it, they cranked it, and Jesus did the, why stand you here gazing? And he's cr and cranking Jesus up, and he's ascending. And it worked on the practice. But the day we had to play, not only the smoke appeared, the smoke appeared, G and everything, and I was a Roman soldier standing at the guard. All I had to do was pass out and fall down because the earthquake <laughs> happened. All my job was to do was to fall down when the earthquake happened. I was keeping one eye open just so I could see Jesus rising up. But what happened was is the cable snapped, and Jesus not only fell, but they slung him back in the tomb. They slung Jesus back in the tomb. So I had one eye open looking at Jesus, and I looked, and he slung in the tomb, and I looked at my brother who was laying down on the ground too, and I said, man, that ain't good. <laughs> it's the craziest story ever. That's a true story, too. That happened in our church, Camden, Arkansas, but people still got saved. We tried to tell him he got out of the tomb, slung him back in there. That's the equivalent of somebody doing a jack-in-the-box. Let's see if we can put Jesus back in and then pop him out on Sunday morning. Now, some of you are laughing, but here's the truth. The truth is, is that the story that Jesus tells the Samaritan woman at the well is so outlandish and so crazy that it changes the whole town and society for them to come see Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, you turn, you can turn if you want to be there, it says, but I has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, he's quoting Isaiah 64, where he actually says this, we've never heard of a God like yours who acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. Now, this is where that comes from. All the other nations, 
all the other nations of all the other worlds, they, were, they, were, they had heard about, they had heard about this God. They had heard stories about this God. They had heard about stories. They had heard about the Red Sea. They heard about the fact that, that the walls fell down in Jericho. They heard about all these things. And they go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, listen, we heard about your God. Now, all these other gods are still in the tomb. All these other gods, they talk a big game. All these other gods, that I've heard stories about them, and the story ends. But we've never heard of a God like yours. There's a story that continues who acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. How many of you know that God? How many of you heard that story? And that story doesn't never get old. Now, turn over to John chapter 4. We're going to do some reading. John, John chapter 4. This is Jesus and the Samaritan woman. If you'll read it, if you didn't bring your Bibles, you can read up there. John chapter 4, we're going to start with, we'll start at verse 5. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now, jo Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Now, I'm going to stop there just for a second because I want you to hear this. The world is still asking for a drink. I mean, you know the world needs, needs a drink. They need a drink of the living water, and um, we have a story to tell. So for his disciples had gone away, verse 8, into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans? And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who asked to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Get that living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, who drank from it himself, as well as his son, his livestock? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. I love the way she directs the conversation. There's a, anybody just direct. You know, I get good at that when I have those conversations with my wife. She'd be like, didn't I tell you? I'd be like, do you know, there's a place that we can go to um, that's really good that I hear they have really good steak. You know what I'm saying? I know how to deflect. I'm pretty good. You know, it's funny. When you're trying to have a conversation with somebody um, about who Jesus is, and we try to point out what, what the obvious is, Captain Obvious, what's going on and what things are going on. People try to deflect, but Jesus obviously knows exactly what's going on. How many know he knows what's going on? This is like a chess move. If you're playing chess, it's a chess move. And, and, and Jesus is always one step ahead because he's the one that is narrating the story and leading the story. And so Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who was called Christ. And when he comes... He will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, the disciples came and marveled that he would talk with a woman. And yet no one said, who do you seek? Or where do you, who, <laughs> why are you talking with her? And the woman left her water pot, went on her way into the city, 
and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, the disciples urged him. They said, Rabbi, they want to eat. And he said, my food is to do the will of the fathers. Verse 34, lift up your eyes, talking about the harvest. And then verse 39 says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And here's what I want to tell you. That's an outlandish story. It's a crazy story. Because if you would have told me that I know a guy who knows everything that you ever did, come meet him, I'd be like, nah. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm, I'm good, nah. Uh, I don't, why would I want, why would I, you, if you told me that there was a guy that when I met him, he would make me prosper. He would make me, I mean, I'd be like, yeah, let me, let me talk to him. Let me have a conversation with him. But I ain't finna go talk to somebody who, know, who knew everything that I ever did. And what got into her to make her go to the city and tell everybody in the city, I know somebody that, that, that knew everything about me. And, I, and people would be like, well, let's go find out. Let's go, let's go meet him. That's, that's backwards. That is not how that's supposed to happen. <laughs> what would make a woman go lead, drop her water pots? And everybody knows the reason why she's going out to the well in the first place, because everybody knows her story. Is that five husband Mary? Yep, that's five husband Mary. <laughs> they over there talking at the Circle J in Jerusalem. The Circle J? <laughs> they over there talking at the Circle J about her. You know, well, her child, you know what husband she on right now? <laughs> You know how they talk in the old towns, in the small towns? I grew up in Camden, Arkansas. I grew up in the small... They said, they said, child, you know about her. And this one didn't work out either, honey. You know what I'm saying? And, then, and then, you know, the other one, his cornbread wasn't done in the middle. Uh, you know, and they, and they got a story about every single person and all the husbands that she had. Now, you're laughing, but all of us got some, some shame and some things in our lives that we don't want nobody to know about. And we don't want nobody to necessarily know about. There's some things, some of you sitting in here, and including me right now, you have said to yourself, I'm taking this one to the grave with me. <laughs> oh, you laughing, but you know what I'm talking about. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't telling nobody that. I ain't telling, I ain't telling nobody that. You, that's going to the grave, man. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't saying nothing about that. But if you meet somebody who looked at you with so much love and with so much compassion and so much grace and so much, and so much love that would cause you to be like, he knows everything that I've ever done and he still loves me and he still cares about me and, he still, he, and he's telling me that he wants to get, and he's not even supposed to be associating with me and he's still here simply because he sees me and he knows me and he still loves me because everybody wants to be known Known. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants, they, they, they want to be loved. Everybody has it. They want to be known. And so all of a sudden, the, the, the script of the story has, has flipped because God is saying the story continues, but it doesn't continue with you staying in the same place that you've been in. Because my God has already had a plan from the beginning. You know, when Adam found out that he was sin, the first thing that he did was hide. When then all the way through Jesus, when when he meets a woman at the well, not only does she hide, but she runs to the city and cries out and says, come see a man that has told me everything that I've ever done. That is a God of love. That's a God who, that's, that's how a story can change a whole city. Simply because there's a, there's a God man who takes shame off you and puts his grace on you. And he puts his spirit and his love in you that will transform. It takes one transformation, and I tra that story will spread like wildfire and change everything. Instead of hiding, you run to him, and you drop your water pot. It's because you know that he is the one that has changed. It's changed. Everything has changed. So the more boys that are sitting over there at the Lazy J, and they're over there talking about, that's five husband Mary. She doesn't see but... 
But what is she on about? What is she talking about? What is going on with her? She said, come see a man. You got to come see him. Now, why would I want to come see somebody that knows everything that I've ever did? Why would I do that? But the Bible says, we just read it. They came out to, they, 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 all of them they came out to the city to seek him simply because a woman's testimony, he said her testimony, her testimony, he said we came out here because of her word, but now we want to hear from you. So I want to tell you this, everybody, we've been talking in this conference about the story, the, the, the epic story that changes everything. The story changes you first. But after it changes you, it should be able to be so powerful that it'll change somebody else. Amen? Everybody got a story. Every, everybody got a story. We had a guy that would tell stories all the time. When I was in high school, we had a guy named Stevie. And everybody, he would tell the same story over and over again. You know them people? And they walk up and they just tell the same story. You know I heard this story. But I would stay simply because the way that he told it. He goes, do you remember that one? And it was all about a pole vaulting. And then he pole vaulted, and so he put the pole, he would pole vault, and he put stick, because you know, black people ain't about to pole vault. That's not, we're scared of heights. We ain't finna, you know what I'm saying? We don't do anything like that in the first place. We're scared of heights. But anyway, he could pole vault, and he did. He cleared the, the, the one, the, the highest that set a record, and he would tell that story. But, but everybody else would be like, man, nobody want to hear that. We know you broke a record, and they would leave. But I, I would stay simply because of the way that he told the story. The way that he told the story was, he said, man, when I put that pole down and I had it, he goes, it bent. It bent so much like, like I thought it was going to break. He goes, I actually heard it crackling when I was going up. And I'd be like, it did? He goes, I heard it crackling. And not only did I hear it crackling, but I heard the whistling of the wind in my ears when I was going up. I'm telling you what, it felt like I was going up stories and stories. I thought that I could fly. I'm telling you what, he would tell the story. was so enthusiastic. And he goes, and then when I cleared the bar, it was in slow motion. I put my hands out like this. And he goes, and then my back arched. I heard crack in my back. And then when I came down, and I, all of a sudden, I I knew I had cleared it, and the joy hit my heart because I didn't hit the bar. And when I came down, I didn't just come down once, but I poof, and bounced again. And that's how I set the record. And I just be like, and they'd be like, man, nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to hear that. I stayed because of the way that he told the story. And I want to tell you that it was the way that this woman told the story to the people that were in the town that changed their mind about what was going on so that they could go see Jesus. I want to tell you that through the power of the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you to be able to tell the story of Jesus can change your neighborhood can change the people that are around you, can change, your, can change your community simply because it is the greatest story that's ever been told to come see a man that told me everything that I've ever done and he still loves me and he still has forgiven me and he still blessed me and he still washed me and I'm still, not only am I going to heaven, but I'm changed and forever changed and you can be changed too because I know a guy and he changed my life. The way you tell the story. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You got a story to tell. Say to somebody, I got a story to tell. Now, I just want to tell you, because we're talking about living water, you're telling that story. It, it'll change society. You're thinking about, I love, I love uh, listening to the, 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 the story uh, about Bonton. I, I'm, I'm thinking about one going down to a place and, 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 and not only... Just, and, and, and changing one life, but changing many life because the story and because somebody wants to be known, somebody wants to be loved, and, and, they, and it changes the whole town. The story still can change society, not the elephant or the donkey. I know y'all, y'all thinking of me like, oh, here we go. <laughs> see, I'm messing some of y'all up because y'all like, is he, is he a conservative? Is he? Democrat is he? What is he? I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I follow after. I don't think he rides the back of donkeys or elephants. 
Last time he rode a donkey, they killed him. So I don't know. I don't know. That may be something to that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but 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 I'm saying he don't ride the back. So, but but we don't need the donkey or the elephant. What we need is the lamb and the lion to be able to come in and change. If you would tell people about the lion, then that he's still roaring, then we would change society. But not only do we need the lamb and the lion, but we also need the dove and the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to be witnesses to him in Jerusalem and Judea and all the other most parts of the earth. You still need the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't care who you are. Somebody said, you need the power, do you need the Holy Spirit to, to live? Do you need the Holy Spirit to, to, to be able to go to heaven? I want to tell you, you need the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. You? <laughs> ha, ha, have y'all been to Walmart? Y'all know anything? Y'all ain't been? You need the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. Go. I know y'all do a lot of that online shopping, but I'm telling you, all you got to do is go. You're going to be like, show the about I mean, you, 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 I'm telling you, I ain't playing. Go to Walmart. See if you don't need to change. Now, you're laughing, but you need the power of the Spirit to be able to tell that story. Now, some of y'all have been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is that true? That's living water of the Spirit. I'm going to tell you, we talk about the water, but you need the Holy Spirit as well to be able to empower you to be able to tell the story that changes society. The power of the Spirit causes you to be able to do that. So you're like, well, I'm just telling you, I, feel, I know how you feel with the Spirit when you got saved, but I'm telling you what, I need, I need him to fill me up every day. I need him. I need the Holy Spirit to fill me up every day to tell this story, to be bold, to tell the story, to come see. I've, I, I, no matter what I've done, I need the power of the Spirit to do it. And you need more. Who's that talking about more? Who's that? He was talking about more. He need, need, need more. Need more of who he is. At. He's like, well, he's, he's going to get more of him, but less of me, but more of him. I must decrease so that he can increase in me and the power of the anointing of the Spirit of God. And I'm going to tell you something. I know this to be true. And somebody, maybe you know, varying degrees, people in different places. But I know that in my, in, in, in my walk with the Lord, that I, I had been in places where I was ankle deep and knee deep and waist deep in the things of, of the Spirit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I knew that because, um, and I learned that because of our church. Um, growing up, just going to say it, uh, black people can't swim. A lot, some of them can't. Some of them can. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's okay to laugh. Some of y'all are nervous, laughing nervous like, Haha, can, I, can I laugh at that? Is that, is that <laughs> it's all right to laugh at that. You, some black people can't swim. I was one of them. Didn't know how to swim. Almost drowned one time. Um, drowned one time. I was floating down the, the little Arkansas, little Missouri River. Almost drowned. And I, I, I'm, it's a true story. I just couldn't swim. And all, I hung out with a lot of white friends, and they could swim. And I always, Alan, was just wondering, I was always at the, at the, at the three foot of the pool. Just, you ever been to a black uh, pool party? <laughs> Ain't nobody in the water. <laughs> Everybody at the grill. <laughs> Everybody at the grill, nobody in the water. That was my life. I just, like, didn't know how to swim. And all, and all my white friends, you know, just like, come on, man, it's fun. Come on out here. They be swinging off of vines. Ah, 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 and into the water. Jump, just diving in in the water. But not me. I'm in with the little floaties on each arm. And that little thing around my waist with the little giraffe, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just sit, just sit here. But, but they want, they like, come on, man, the water's good. Come on. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good over here. Now, you're laughing, but that's the truth when it comes to some of you guys, when it comes to being empowered by the Spirit. You're just like, look, I'm going to stay down here on this end because it's comfortable. God never called you to be comfortable, but he called you to be conformed to the image of his son. And so you got to step out of your comfort zone and go out and tell the story, but be empowered by the Spirit to do so. And so I, I would stay down, I stay down here at the end. I'm good. And I was looking ridiculous. Just think about this. I'm a big dude. I got the little floaty on this arm and the floaty on that arm, and I'm doing this deal, but I'm thinking I'm cool when I'm not. But the truth is, is I was always curious about going down there. What would it be like to go down there on the deep end, the deep end of the, of the pool? What would it be like? And so we went to a camp meeting one time in Oklahoma, Kenneth Hagen camp meeting. And they took us to a water park. And I walked down there just to be curious. And I don't know who it was, but somebody pushed me in, the deep end. And, and they, I'm telling you what, and I don't know, I think it was a white dude. I ain't gonna be honest with you, I think it was. <laughs> I don't know if somebody would like wash this, look at him, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> wash this, hold my, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I'm just saying. I'm standing there at the end of the deal, and I fell in. And, I'm, and, I, and the lifeguard didn't see me, but I am bobbing up and down. Just, and all the thoughts came back to me when I was almost drowned in that little Missouri River. And I didn't know what to do. 
I didn't know what to do. And so I was like, I'm, this is it. This is, it, it, it is sink or swim. Whatever we're going to do, we're going to do. So I don't know what to do. Let me tell you what came to my mind. Now, black people can't swim, but black people can dance. <laughs> they can dance. So let me tell you what I did. I shook what my mama gave me, and then I pulled some water, and I did a little something like this, and I moved around, and then I shook it again, and I did. I was working that thing. I was doing whatever I had to do, and I was working it. But let me tell you something. You're laughing, but I found myself on the other side of the pool simply because I was moving. Here's what I want to tell you. If you're living in fear, and you let the power of the Holy Spirit take you down to the deep end and say, I want more and all that God has for me, all you got to do is move and say, God, I want everything that you have. You will find yourself on the other side and being able to do what you've not been able to do on your own because he empowers us to be able to do what he's called us to do and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that the world can know that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is my Redeemer. He is the one that brought me out of the mobby clay and set my feet on a rock. He's called me to be a witness to him and to win the world for Jesus simply because I am not to be comfortable but to be conformed into his image and I believe I'm going to take the world with me. How about you? That's what he's called us to do. Now you're not going to be able to do that sitting in there wondering about what they're going to say on CNN, MSNBC, BET. You're not going to be able to figure out anything that way. You're going to have to get out of the house and say, come see a man that told me everything that I ever did. And they said, show sure enough. Yes, yes enough. I didn't even know what show sure enough was. We know what I'm saying. We say that. And raise your hand if you heard that. Show sure enough. Shona, I thought that was an Arkansas term. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, Holly. That's a Shona. But let me tell you something. He's shown up. He is good. His grace shown up. He is good. His, his power shown up. He is real. His love shown up. He is tangible. And he's shown up. He is showing up in churches, but outside the four walls of the church. We have a saying here when we, after every meeting, after every gathering, that you are to go out and be the church, our people. Go out and be the church. We say it after every meeting, after every gathering, because I want you to get out of these walls. Don't stay here. Get out. I want my kids to grow up and get out. I don't want them to stay. You know what I'm saying? Honey, we almost there. We close. You know, we halfway there. Oh, halfway. Anyway, I'm just saying, we're going to get, we, we almost, we almost there. But it's true. I want them to grow up. I want them to grow up, and I want them to get out. So that's what a pastor's job is to do, that you grow up into the head, which is Christ, but to equip you to go out and do the work of the ministry. Amen? Amen? And do the work of an evangelist to go out and tell a story. It's the greatest story ever told. I know y'all looking at me like, where did he come from? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm coming from a life that's been changed. I come from a life that I should be dead. Do you hear me? I should not be here. But he changed my life. You think I'm going to go out and just be quiet? I ain't going out being quiet. I'm telling you what, when I, I mean, when I, when I go see him, I'm going to be like, Lord, I told him. I let him know. I told him about you. I'm telling you, I told him about you. I told him everything. I said, come see a man. And I'm seeing you right now. But I said, come see a man. I'm thinking about Richard Culpepper. He told people about Jesus. You know who Richard Culpepper is? I'm telling you, we call him Uncle Richard. Richard told people, the swill and the sweetest man I ever knew. I'm telling you what, he done told people about Jesus, so when he got up there, be like, hey, I told him. I let him know. I'm telling you what, I, I want to be going to church and being quiet and I know that there's a God that's out there saving people. I don't want to be quiet and, and uh, when I can be loud and let everybody else know who Jesus is. Because he's real to me. I don't know if he's real. He's real to me. He changed my, I mean, I should be, I should be dead. Man, I'm telling you what, I'm looking at my wife I mean, we've been married 25 years, <laughs> and she's laughing because she's like, I wanted to kill you myself some couple of times. <laughs> You're right. You should be dead. <laughs> Matter of fact, after I got shot, somebody gave us a new van, and uh, then that van went out, and she goes, you think you could get shot again? You think that <laughs> somebody could shoot you one more time? That's a true story. She did say that. You, look, she's shaking her head. She did. You want to get shot again? Just talk back to her. 
Jesus would be like, what are you doing up here? Like, Jesus, what are you doing up here? I don't know. I just told Vanessa to calm down, and I'm looking up here seeing you. That's all I'm doing. I just told her to calm down. I just thought, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here talking to you. She was like, I, I know what happened. Come on. Let me show you to your mansion. Here's the truth, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. God has called you for something more. I love what Karis said. Where's Karis? What she said about let's dance. That's why I, I wasn't even going to tell that story about that. But I'm telling you, I, 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 I can swim now. I mean, I love the water now. And some of my people, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, uh, we have a boat, and I go out on the boat, and, um, you know, they, and all the white people be like, <laughs> you know, he stole that. And then, uh, and then they go, <laughs> and then they go, this is what, this what they go, like, <laughs> Wow, a black man, because it's just rare. I have a black man driving a boat in the water. So God really changed my life, you know what I'm saying? And so the truth is, is that you're laughing, but your testimony is so amazing that he's changed you and he's done something so crazy on the inside of you that the people will be, they'll see you and they'll say, wow, wow, what is going on there? And all you were doing, all you were doing was dancing. You were moving. You were dancing. You were telling people about a man that knew everything about me. And that's what's going to change a society. I still think there's hope for this nation. Um, I think there's hope for the church. I believe there's hope for us to be able to see this world change for Christ. But it's going to start with us partnering, just as Tom said today, partnering with him because he's made us as his masterpieces to be able to change the world around us. You hear what I'm saying? Can I pray for you? Lord, I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you. I, I thank you for your presence and your, and your spirit that lives within us. Even right now, you have changed us for such a time as this. You're, you're such a good God. Would you just tell the Lord out of your own mouth? Would you do that? Just say, Lord, you're so good. And you help us to step outside our comfort zone. Would you help us to get outside of ourselves? Would you help us to step out of uh, the norm and uh, the things that we're comfortable with so that we can tell people that are around us to come see a, a, a story that changes a whole society, that changes a people group, that changes the world. Lord, you, that story is the greatest story ever told. So I want to thank you for that. I, I pray, Lord, that you would empower us by your spirit to step into everything that you have for us. And I'm glad, Lord, that it says that you, you were raised from the dead. There's all power, all dominion, all might, all of it belongs to you. So help us, Lord, to to see you for who you are. Just real quick, um, just keep your head, I, mean, I, just, I just got a couple minutes, that, and, uh, and then um, we're going to transition here for a minute. I'm going to ask you, there's uh, everybody in here, if you have somebody in your family, a loved one, a neighbor, if you have somebody that you've been praying for to come to the Lord, you got that person in your mind, right now. You know him. You're like, I've been praying for this for a long time. Somebody's like, I know somebody. I want you to lift your hand. I'm, your head, just, you know, somebody you've been praying for to come to the Lord. Just lift your hand. Like, I, I got somebody. Just, and just keep it up for me. I'm going to pray. Let's pray together. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. And you, you, you don't have to say their name out loud, but just go ahead and say it in your mind. Say it in your heart. Say their name. Just say, Lord, I'm praying for. I'm, Lord, they need to come to you. I'm praying, Lord, that they would surrender to you. They would come, they would come to know you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, that they, Lord, I pray that you would arrest them by your spirit, Lord. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I say that, Lord, they're under, the, they're under arrest by your spirit. So I'm going to speak to them right now. Let's, I'm going to speak to them. Say, so you have the right to remain in, to be in Jesus. Anything you say can and will be used to bring you to the bleeding side of Calvary. You have a right to attorney. His name is Jesus. He's already pleaded your case, and he knows that you can come to the bleeding side of Calvary and come to know him in the name of Jesus. Do you understand these rights? <laughs> Do you understand these rights? I'm talking to the person that you're praying for. Do you understand these rights? That you have, you're coming to him. You know, whether you know it or not, we're praying for you to come, prodigals coming home, people coming to know who you are, Jesus, in Jesus' name. 
Lord, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you, Lord, for the story that changes, the story that transforms, the story that never dies. And we're a part of that story. But, Lord, you're adding to that story every day. And I know it's true because your word says that you're adding to the church daily those that are being saved. So I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.